right, if everyone could please find their seats, we're going to start here momentarily. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you and good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It's, it's a very exciting day here at the University of Buffalo as I welcome the 26th head coach of our football program today. Uh, in a moment I'll introduce our athletic director Mark Allnut, who will make the formal introduction. Um, just before, uh, just to give you a little bit of heads on how we're going to do this, uh, once Mark gets up here and makes his comments and introduces uh, Coach Linguist, uh, we'll take some questions. We'll let them make their opening statements, then we'll take questions from the media uh, after that. So uh, with that, I'd like to introduce the Athletic Director here at the University of Buffalo to make this great announcement today, Mark Allnut. First of all, good morning and uh, welcome to the Murchie Family Fieldhouse. You know, outside it's a, it's a beautiful day here in Buffalo, but it's a great day to be a bull today. First and foremost, I would like to thank a few people uh, to acknowledge and obviously for their support. Uh, Dr. Satish Tripathi, uh, appreciate your support of athletics, appreciate your trust um, in, in my team in terms of uh, leading a phenomenal search. So thank you very much. You know, I'd also like to thank uh, the internal members of our search committee, and I, and I see them kind of spread out throughout this, uh, throughout the field house here, but our deputy athletics directors, uh, Nate Wills, uh, Eric Gross, our senior associate athletic director, senior women's administrator, Deanne Keller, and even in the 11th hour, from a logistical standpoint, bringing in uh, Nikki Smolinski, our, our all everything assistant. So, so thank you guys for uh, your guidance and advice throughout this process. Uh, I have to give a shout out over there to the to Cheer, Dazzlers, our band, Victor. I haven't seen you guys in a while, so thank you for being here today. Go Bulls, appreciate that. Appreciate your energy and enthusiasm. <clears throat> well, just quickly before I introduce uh, you know, our, our next head football coach, um, you know, what a, what a whirlwind, okay? But what an exciting whirlwind. You know, when I first received a call at 8.05 uh, last, last Friday, I was actually on the way to drop off my youngest son to school, and it was uh, it was Coach Leipold, you know, informing me that he was going to take the uh, the University of Kansas job. And I want to also like to thank him and his staff for the tremendous job that they did here uh, during their tenure. When we talk about laying a foundation, when we talk about establishing a a, a winning culture, um, you know, he and his staff did that, and, we, and we're excited um, in terms of where we are right now. And I, I wish them the best of luck. Uh, moving forward, as I even told him, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a fan of theirs every time until they play the University of Missouri. And then I'm, I'm not going to be a fan at that time. But uh, as we move forward, you know, we talked about there was the unique timing of this search being in May. Typically, these searches are, are in December. You know, we couldn't be reactive. We couldn't afford to be reactive. You know, the advantage that we had is that the search process of Kansas took a, took a, you know, a, a, a rather a lengthy time, 51 days, um, when, the, when that transition occurred. It gave us an opportunity to really anticipate. Um, we knew there was some mutual interest there uh, between the two parties, but we didn't know where it would go. So it gave us opportunity to really start, you know, unofficially before this was announced. And then when it was announced, we were able to gather the team together. And let's talk about characteristics of who we were looking for in the next coach. You know, we wanted someone of extremely high integrity, okay? We want someone who had, who's a proven winner, you know, a relentless recruiter, you know, a family man, which you will see here as, as we move forward. You know, we wanted somebody that understood Buffalo, understood the Mid-American Conference, and more importantly, knew what it take to continue this tremendous trajectory that we're on, someone who could connect with our student athletes, connect with the community, someone that could bring some energy 
to the to the to the program. And then last but not least, I think one of the most important aspect of this is, you know, a motivator for our men, for our young men in the program, not just to succeed on the football field, but to succeed in the classroom and ultimately prepare them for life to become outstanding fathers, husbands, neighbors, coworkers, whatever the case might be. And with our next candidate, you know, he checked all the boxes. So I'm extremely proud, excited, honored to introduce our next head football coach here at the University at Buffalo. Before I introduce him, I will be remiss. You know, there's also a person in my life who is unofficially my boss that uh, we had to disrupt some plans this last week, but uh, she was at my side and, you know, was very supportive. But I want to introduce my wife, uh, Kate, being here. So I appreciate uh, your support throughout. And then when we talk about family, Stacy, it was incredible uh, meeting you uh, over this past past week. Good to see Lance. Good to see Mara here. And hey, you can't Mother's Day can't forget the grandmas either. So thank you having the grandmothers here as well. And it was funny because you know Kate had a chance to take Stacy out to lunch, and the first thing she said when she got back to the to our house was, "I love Stacy. I love Stacy." When I met Stacy the first time Friday night, Stacy was like, "I love Kate. I love Kate." So that that matches there. So I look forward to you guys working together. So without further ado, I want to introduce our next head football coach here at the University at Buffalo, Maurice Mo Linquist. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the uh, mothers that we celebrated over the weekend. Uh, we could not do anything without you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Maurice Linguis, and I am honored, humbled, and privileged to be standing before you today as the head football coach at the University at Buffalo. It's great to be back in Buffalo. I'd like to start by thanking the leadership. Dr. Tripathi, thank you. Thank you for your insight for your vision, for your wisdom, leading the University at Buffalo, for the excellence that you lead with. Mark Allnut, our wives were an instant connection. I think he and I were both an instant connection. Uh, sometimes you just know. Thank you for your faith and confidence in me uh, to lead our young men in this program. Nate Wills, Eric Gross, Deanne Keller, thank you for your support, guidance, insight, commitment, and everything that you did during this process. I'd also like to acknowledge Coach Lance Leipold, his staff for the many ac accomplishments that he had here at Buffalo, three straight uh, bowl trips, two MAC East titles, nothing short of amazing. Great job, Coach. I'd also like to recognize the accomplishments, accomplishments of so many former Buffalo greats that have helped the overall development of the program. Former AD Ward Manuel, former AD Danny White, former AD Alan Green, former coach Turner Gill, former coach Jeff Quinn, who ultimately uh, gave me the opportunity to come here uh, the first go around. I would also be remiss if I didn't introduce my family uh, that is here with me supporting me today. My wife Stacy, I love you. Thank you for always being there, for being my rock. Mara, four-year-old Mara, two-year-old Lance. He's probably got about another 15 minutes of being still, and he's going to be running all over the place. I want you to see your father and know that dreams do come true. To my mom and uh, my mother-in-law, thank you. I love you. To my dad uh, back in Dallas, I love you. To my father-in-law back in Houston, I love you, Keith. I love you, Dad Maurice. Thank you. I'd also like a chance to recognize a handful of individuals that have played such a large role in my overall development. First, some of the women that have been in my life throughout my years. My grandmother, she taught me how to slow down, how to be patient, how to listen. My mom and mother-in-law that are here today, 
They are the toughest, hardest working women that I know. And I watched my mom and got that work ethic from my mom growing up in Dallas, Texas. To my aunts and my cousins all over the place, thank you for the spiritual development that you continue to guide me with. Um, to my wife, who I mentioned before, she is my balance and that's where my intelligence comes from. She is my sounding board. To my daughter, Mara, if you ever want to see what grit and determination looks like, try to get the iPad back for, from her before bedtime. She's fierce. She reminds me every day of uh, being determined for what you want is always important. Coaching wise, there's so many men that have been in my life that have played an impact in my life. Uh, starting with my high school coach back at Mesquite High School, uh, Steve Halpin. We were fortunate enough to be 15 and 0 in state champs back in Texas. And I remember how hard he coached me and uh, the development that he played in, in my younger ages. Uh, Mickey Matthews, back at James Madison University. That's where I learned how to really evaluate prospects at a FCS level. Uh, Jeff Quinn, as I mentioned before, thanks for bringing me here the first time. Lou Tepper was a defensive coordinator. Uh, Paul Rhodes at Iowa State. We talked about an all, all in mentality. Dan Mullen at, at Mississippi State, now at University of Florida. Relentless effort, getting 11 guys to play as hard as humanly possible. PJ Fleck, my friend, my mentor, thank you for your leadership, for your culture, for your teaching. I could go on and on about you, PJ. Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M, thank you for the opportunity to be on your staff and to teach me about recruiting at a national level and really what it takes to build a program. Mike Elko, probably the smartest defensive coach I've ever been around. Just learned so much, so many X's and O's from Mike Elko at Texas A&M. And Mike McCarthy with the Dallas Cowboys, the systematic approach to running an organization. The stories that you told me about winning Super Bowls, how to get there and what you need to do. Thank you, Coach McCarthy. To Coach Harbaugh, thank you for the opportunity to be with you in Ann Arbor on the Michigan staff. And to Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern, I constantly lean on him for leadership and for guidance. Thank you for your advice over the years. And to former AD, Alan Green, thank you for the support and the friendship over the years. Who am I as a coach? I am a Division II coach that has had to grind his way to the top. I remember the 15-hour bus ride from Valdosta, Georgia to Southern Arkansas when we stopped at the Golden Corral in between in Florence, Alabama, and uh, the joy of getting the all-you-can-eat buffet. I understand the hard road. I understand the hard path. If you want to know about me, I'll tell you about the five F's in my life. Number one is my faith. Coaching is my ministry. And I thank God for the opportunity and where he's brought me from and where he has me right now. My family that's here today and all over, nothing is more important to me than being a father and being a husband to Mara and Lance and a husband to Stacy. You think about the power of football, which is my third F. That's why we're all here today. Where it's brought me from, the opportunities that it's presented me with. I got an opportunity to get my undergrad and my master's paid for through football. And my professional and my personal flight. Uh, you know, growing up, my personal flight, I, I had the case of the twos. Uh, in high school, they said I was too short. I was the last to get a scholarship. I think Baylor had one in their back pocket. They threw one at me. But I ended up being an honorable mention all Big 12 safety, an academic all Big 12 safety, and was the uh, team defensive MVP. I think about my professional flight, the journey that it's been, the ups, the downs. That's where I get my healthy competitive chip from, the grit and the toughness that you got to have, the losses, the highs, the lows, the wins. I'm battle tested and I'm thankful for it. And I also believe in the last F of having a healthy balance between being focused and having fun, enjoying the game of football, enjoying the men around us, enjoying the community, enjoying the games, enjoying people from all different backgrounds, putting differences aside to come together for one common purpose. I'm a servant leader with a passion for young people. I'm an elite teacher, communicator, connector, and motivator. And I am a relentless, 
24-7, 365 day recruiter. When we were in Minneapolis and my wife was pregnant with my first child, Mara, we were going into the delivery room um, there in Minneapolis. And I remember I got a call from a four-star recruit and I had a decision to make. I wasn't gonna leave my wife, but I had to answer that phone. My wife looked up to me and said, I know you're not talking to a recruit. Just so we're all on the same page, we got them signed. <laughs> My vision for Buffalo football is clear and concise. We want to run the very best program in the United States of America. We want to continue the success that Lance has already created. We want to build and continue a championship culture of academic and athletic success. We want to build the most dominant football program in the Mid-American Conference graduate our football players, put championship rings on our fingers, develop our men to the very best version of, our, of themselves and do it all with integrity. We're gonna do it the right way. You can put me on the loop of all the other coaches, but I mean that. We have, we have a life, we want to have a lifelong relationship with the young men that we coach. We're going to work tirelessly to put a product on the field that every fan, supporter and alumni can be proud of. We want non-football fans in Western New York to be attracted to our football program, not just because we had a great season, but because of who we are and what we stand for as men, the coaching staff, the support staff, the leadership in place, and the players. We wanna connect our program to the city of Buffalo and the city of Buffalo to Western New York and Western New York to the state of New York and New York to the North e Northeast, and Northeast to ultimately to the nation. And we truly believe that football can change the world. The University at Buffalo is the flagship university of the state of New York. We are an academic juggernaut, AAU University. We are the largest state university in New York with over 32,000 students and over 200,000 alumni worldwide nationally ranked medical school, business school, education, engineering, the very best combination we believe of academic and athletic success. To the former players of all generations listening here today and wherever, wherever you are worldwide, I am honored and humbled to be your head football coach. I will do my very, very best to uphold all that you have created and built here at Buffalo. Khalil Mack, I remember you picking me up and hugging me when we got that sixth win. And we knew back in 2013 that we accomplished something special. You squeezed me so hard I could barely breathe. I miss you and I can't wait to see you again. Brandon Oliver, Joe Licata, Mason Shrek, all the guys that have reached out to me, Matt Weiser, Naja Johnson, thank you guys for your support. Thank you for the work that you put in. Thank you for the foundation that was established. And thank you for allowing your efforts to build upon where we are today. To our donors, I am blown away by the overall development and loyal support that we've received over the years. Tooney Murchie and the Murchie family, thank you for your continued support and your vision of Buffalo athletics and Buffalo football. To the future donors, we need your help. We need your resources, we need your time, we need your connections, we need your energy. Our doors are open, come see us, and we definitely plan on being all over the community of Buffalo and Western New York. 115 days to September 2nd. We are truly entering unprecedented times. We certainly recognize the challenge ahead moving forward. Our organizational skills, our communication skills, our coaching skills, our cohesion and synergy is going to be put to test. We are doing something that has never been done before in terms of a transition. The good thing is, is we are ready, we are focused, and we are hungry. Our success will not be because, be because of any one individual. It's gonna be because of the collective effort of everybody involved. It's gonna be because we had one assistant coach 
that stayed up a little bit later to do a little bit more work to find one answer that we wouldn't have had to help us win a game. It's going to be because of our strength and conditioning staff putting in the time and research and development into the science of what they do to give us 1% better chance of our player winning that one-on-one -on -one battle. It's going to be because of the collective effort of all of us in this room today to put our differences aside, to come together for one cause, and to continue to build Buffalo into a national brand. We need all of us pulling in the same direction. We need to put our differences aside and come towards the same goal. We will create sound decision-making processes that are going to lead to sustainable success. And we will be the sum of our daily decisions. What can we expect from our program? People and relationships come first. Nothing is more important to me than the student athlete. But because of the, if the student athlete was not here, there would be no need for us. We wouldn't be here. We believe in the total development of the student athlete, a holistic approach, academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually, things that I've learned along the years and along the way. We can coach our players as far as our relationship is with them. We will challenge our student athletes to be the very best version of themselves. Ultimately, the essence of our program is about manhood development, life skills training, and we do it with culture and leadership. Our seven core values of being the very best man you can be, the trust, respect, discipline, unity, competing in everything we do, and making sure that we have an immediate right response to whatever challenges come our way will be at the forefront of who we are and what we do. You're going to ask me about our recruiting philosophy and what our approach is going to be. We are going to dominate the state of New York in recruiting first. Every high school coach in this state, we want that connection, that friendship, that relationship. The very best players in the state of New York will come to the university at Buffalo. We're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever's out there and win those one-on-one -on -one battles to get the very best players in this Buffalo uniform. We're going to attack the MAC footprint. We're going to take a bi position to coach when it comes to national recruits. There's a five-step process that we'll ultimately use to identify, evaluate, recruit, retain, and ultimately develop the student athletes that come and be a part of our program. To the recruits nationwide that may maybe don't know as much about the University at Buffalo, we're going to come see you, we're going to educate you, and we can't w wait uh, to the for the opportunity to get on the road and for you to come visit our great state and our great campus. We will recruit 365 days a year and constantly look for ways to improve our roster. To all the high school coaches in New York and around the nation, our doors are open. Come see us. When it comes to our staff, I've spent years formulating a group of men, a group of coaches, men and women in support staff, that I, best believe, that I believe best fit who I am. We will put together an elite staff of coaches and allow our systems to have enough flexibility to promote our players' strengths and hide our weaknesses. We have an elite group of men and women that are experts at what they do and have a passion for young people. We also have an elite group of coaches here on campus that we recognize that we will sit down and speak to and they have knowledge that we think is valuable that could help us during the transition. Our offense and defensive and special teams philosophy. The essence of what we're, what we're gonna look like, the number one ingredient to successful football, we believe, is play style. We will make people uncomfortable with how physical we play. We will play with a shocking level of effort. And we believe in a physical, free, disciplined, and confident brand of football. We believe in a multiple pro-style system designed to take advantage of our strengths and hide our weaknesses. And then we're going to hire the very best coaches, intelligent men, thoughtful men, 
that are going to be flexible enough to put our players in positions to succeed and give them the tools necessary to be successful. Ultimately, that's what we're looking to do philosophy-wise. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come back to Buffalo, to the university at Buffalo, to the State University of New York at Buffalo. I could not be more proud and more humbled and more excited to be your next head football coach. Go Bulls. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, Coach Linguist and Mark are now available for questions. Um, I only ask when you, before you ask the question, please introduce yourself uh, and, and what media outlet you're from. I believe uh, Rachel has the first question, so go ahead, Rachel. Hi, Maurice. Uh, Rachel Lindsay from hey, the Rachel. Buffalo News. Good to you? meet you. You really outlined your vision for your program, what goals that you have, you know, over the next 115 days and long term, but. How do you implement those and do those quickly now that you're on campus? I think very thoughtfully. Um, we said it before, this is, this is a uh, unprecedented time. Taking over a program, uh, the, the, the positive of it is, is that uh, through Dr. Chapati, Mr. Allnut, and all the administration, we're taking over a stable foundation. Uh, we recognize the challenges that we have because of the time. Uh, we had a team meeting uh, the other day, and, we, and we, we clearly stated and expressed that to the team. Uh, this is not an overhaul as much as, as it is a continuation. And we will slowly implement things that are true to our identity, uh, but also take into consideration the timing of things. Uh, we will be ready to go when the time is needed. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Maurice. Andy Young here with Spectrum News. So hey, congratulations. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Uh, with the transfer portal and what's going on, and a lot of recruits hesitant maybe to come to your staff and come to this program, how do you get those guys either to stay with the program or the signees to recommit to the program? Retention is the, at the forefront of college football right now. I think it's at the forefront of everything in collegiate athletics and academics. Um, ultimately, uh, there was a transition that took place, so you understand um, the, uh, the, the process of some of the kids entering the portal. Uh, we've already reached out to a number of those guys. Uh, we are uh, constantly, every day, recruiting our roster, and we are very confident in our ability uh, to, to uh, lay out a vision and a plan that we believe our student-athletes are going to want to be a part of and ultimately retain uh, those, those, those uh, gentlemen in the, in the portal and get them back on our roster. Jonah, uh, Jonah, <clears throat> excuse me, Jonah Bronstein, Niagara Gazette. Hey, Jonah, um, how far along are you in, in putting together your staff and evaluating whether any of the current staff will be retained, and how much of a challenge is that doing it at this time of the year? Extremely challenging. Uh, the good thing is, is that, like we said it before, uh, the one thing that we're going to always do is we're going to have a plan for everything, and uh, I believe in being prepared and uh, trying to stay ready and not get ready. Uh, so the good thing is, is when, when we were first identified as a potential candidate, uh, there was a lot of groundwork that was already in place, uh, making contacts with coaches. Uh, we have coaches that are on the way right now. Uh, we're in the middle of making some decisions on certain, certain positions and other coaches. Uh, we're going to get the right men in place. Just because of the timing of things, we're not going to make any impulse or knee-jerk decisions. We're going to make sure we're thoughtful in who we hire. Um, uh, but we're in the midst of doing all those things right now. Uh, the phone, once I get back, uh, it will probably go up to over 500 messages and texts and calls on my phone right now. I answered 100 of them at 2 a.m. and uh, waiting for some responses back uh, this morning. Right. Jason, you're next. Hey, Coach. Jason Wolf with the Buffalo News. Pleasure hey, to Jason. meet you. Uh, you obviously uh, left Michigan after uh, less than a year there. What went into your decision-making process to leave, to come to Buffalo, and how difficult was that on you personally, and how much did your previous experience here factor into your ultimate decision to come? Every, everything that you just mentioned. I would still be at Michigan if this wasn't f uh, for this incredible opportunity here. Uh, when, when, when Mark and I first uh, communicated, uh, like I said, it was an instant connection in my eyes. Uh, I have a lot of familiarity with the university at Buffalo. 
a lot of great memories that we want to bring back and bring back to life and continue to build on. Um, obviously, anytime you make a transition, um, the recruits and the student athletes and the coaches and the community that you're a part of, it's always difficult. Um, uh, but this, this was just too good for me to not, not uh, investigate and be a part of. And as hard of, as it was to leave that situation, uh, we could not be more excited to be here um, and, and get ready to work. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, Coach Paul Peck from Buffalo Bulls Radio. Welcome back to town. Good, Good to see, see you again. Good to see uh, you. you mentioned some of the ex-players that you heard from, Khalil and Mason Shrek and Joe Licata. You didn't even actually coach a lot of them positionally. What does that tell you about your approach in relating to and building relationships with players that you'll obviously try to continue here? I, I, it's, it's all about relationships. It is all about relationships. Our coaching staff that we're bringing in here is going to know that. They already know that. Um, I was never, I never looked at it as I was a position coach and regulated to my guys. Um, the connection that we have with our players throughout uh, different positions like Khalil Mack and Brandon. Uh, I mean, Khalil and I, would, we would sit down and have long talks about all kinds of things. And it's just so, it brings so much war warmth to my heart when you see guys just reach out because you never, you never know as a coach sometimes uh, you just be as you're as genuine as you can be with all players and uh, you always want to have a desire to have a lifelong relationship with your players and do it the right way for me it's just it's so it's so encouraging just to see the warm response that i've gotten from so many guys um i remember alex zordage gave me a bottle of wine and just said hey you're a real one i love you coach all those things matter to me so much i never opened it it's still sitting on my my, my, my case uh, uh back in ann arbor right now but I'm, I'm so excited about re-engaging the former players um, that I haven't seen in a while, getting them back on campus, the current players that we have on our roster, the incoming class of student athletes that are already signed and on their way, and the uh, future, future uh, uh, recruits that we're going to bring to our program. Um, uh, a connected team, a united team, is always a dangerous team. And we're going to make sure we stay connected and, uh, and, and connect the generations of Bulls from class to class. Go ahead, Rachel. Maurice, what is the biggest challenge you're going to face here at UB? I wouldn't put it into one single uh, line of one single thing. I think uh, ultimately we all recognize the challenge that's in front of us. Um, uh, there's a lot of moving parts to the transition that's, that's happening right now. I think organizational skills, being detailed and thorough in everything we do, uh, mapping out a detailed plan, and also using, using uh, all the resources available. The one thing that was so encouraging to me throughout this process, uh, going through it with Dr. Chapati, going through it with Mr. Allnut, going through it with Eric and, and Deanne and Nate, uh, the support. I think everybody understands where we are. and. Um, and, 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 and what we have ahead of us, uh, even down to our administrative assistant, Julie O'Neill, she texted me immediately uh, when she found out I got the job. What can I do? What do we need to get done? We have support. We have the people in place. We have the people coming. Uh, obviously, uh, it's an unprecedented time. It's never been done before in terms of the timing of things. Uh, but like I stated before, I do believe we are focused, hungry, and ready for the challenge ahead. Go ahead, Jason. Coach, you had mentioned a, a handful of times now the instant connection that you felt with Mark Allnut. I was curious about what it was like meeting him for the first time and how you guys did manage to hit it off. What was it about your, your initial interactions or conversations that made you feel like this was the right move for you? I felt like we, we've known each other longer than we have, truth, truthfully. And then when my wife came back and, and she saw Kate and said, I love her, and it just all, it, 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 it was all right. There was, there was no hiccups, there was no red flags, there was no apprehension about anything. Um, seldom, I believe, when you, when you enter a new situation, is everything just right? And we just felt like everything was right with this opportunity. Uh, the relationships, we got a chance to sit down and have dinner with, with Mark and his wife, and um, it was just a connection that was instant. And I, I don't know any other way to describe it than that. All right, any other questions for either coach, linguist, or for Mark? All right, well, thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you at uh, football camp. Starts in when? July, August? You have a date yet? It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming out, everyone. <laughs>